Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fairfield County Scores live webinar on Trusted Advisors Are Valuable at Every Stage of Business. I'm Bud Freund, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County, and I will be your host. Our speaker today is Mary Ann Croce, and more about her in just a minute. This webinar is being done in collaboration with the Monroe Chamber of Commerce, the Monroe Library, and the Monroe Economic Development Commission. And a few words from Beth Stoller before I go any farther. Beth? Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's um, webinar. Happy spring to everybody, even though it doesn't really feel like it today. I'm Beth Stoller, and I'm the Operations and Event Manager for the Monroe Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Monroe Chamber, the Edith Wheeler Memorial Library, SCORE, and also the Monroe Economic Development Commission, I'd like to thank you for attending tonight's webinar. This is the final of our six-part Build Your Business workshop series. If you have attended, I'd like to ask if you've attended any one of the six or more than one, if you could just put a number into the chat area I'm just curious how many people have attended one or more of our series. We've discussed many topics over these last five, six weeks. We talked about not letting a setback get in your way. We've talked about sales and marketing and the differences. We talked about social media and we also talked about funding, e-commerce, which brings us to tonight. Marianne Croce is gonna be speaking to us about trusted advisors. So we've covered a lot of different topics and we hope that you've enjoyed this series. So I'm looking forward to hearing what Marianne has to say. She always teaches me something new. So let me not hold this up any longer. Thanks again for attending and I will turn it back to you, bud. Thank you very much. Folks, a few things we like to read through before we get started. Uh, SCORE is part of the Small Business Administration. We've got about 240 offices nationwide, over 11,000 volunteers. In Fairfield County, we've got over 100 volunteers with a wide range of industry, process, and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. First, free one-on-one -on -one counseling, which these days is not so one-on-one, -on -one, but you can find the request a mentor link on our website, or you can see the link here on the screen. Uh, second, we do educational workshops and webinars, and we get over 150 of them a year. So um, see somebody attended three of the, uh, the Monroes. Uh, we get good attendance. Third, we have extensive resources on our website, including uh, information on very different network subject matter and um, experts who can give you answers to pretty much anything. Uh, and you'll find it at fairfieldcounty.score.org. Um, if you've got questions, please use the Q&A window today so that we can get our questions over to Mary Ann. They're recorded at our end of things. Um, and also our webinar will end at seven to respect your time. And as I said, it's being recorded and you'll find a link available in a few days at fairfieldcounty.score.org. Now about our speaker, Mary Ann, she has been a business coach, a speaker and a business owner since 1999 and certified in the 90 day year performance system. Hopefully she's going to talk about that. Um, her years of experience in the banking, retail, construction, and the automotive industries make her relatable at local and national events. She admires and respects the grit and drive small business owners have and finds working with them, sharing insights and lessons learned to help them succeed a rewarding experience. Business grows as owners and leaders grow. You should not go it alone. I'll turn it over to Mary Ann. It's all yours. Unmute yourself, please. Thank you, Budley. I appreciate it. And I'm really, really glad to be here. Um, there we go. So I'm excited because SCORE is near and dear to me. And as Budley said, um, I 
have been involved with SCORE for a long time. SCORE actually helped me start my first business, the brick and mortar that he speaks of since 1999. So this is a wonderful opportunity for me to give back. I am a business owner, coach, advisor, speaker, and a SCORE volunteer. And I'm a certified partner of the 90 day year performance system. This is a system that has worked for thousands of business owners in different industries, athletes as well. And it's vetted, it's proven, and I am so happy to be part of it. So what I do in a nutshell is I help business owners with teams, increase profits, develop leaders, and customize a work-life balance that works. And yes, businesses grow as owners and leaders grow, as Budley says, but they also thrive. So let's get to today's presentation. I really love the fact that this is a series and I am the last one of the workshops that were done to uh, build your business. And I love that because I kind of think that this is really going to really uh, tie everything all together. So trusted advisors are valuable at every stage of business. And why they are so valuable is they help you realize your dream or achieve your goals sooner sooner than going it alone. So what happens is we've used trusted advisors, right? In, in our personal life, we'll call a banker or a lawyer or an attorney, uh, an accountant, I should say. We'll ask and we'll wanna learn and we'll take their advice, their recommendations. We may do it in our personal life for our children. We'll go back and ask a, a doctor or a pediatrician for advice with our child. And then when it comes to business, we'll also ask people and go to sources that we have. So we've been doing this all along. But what I want people to realize is what I see from my perspective and what I see talking to business owners for, business owners for 20 plus years is that they go into business because they have a dream and their dream is a lot of different reasons they go in, but the one that I hear the most is freedom. They want more time and they want that flexibility. But the reality is they tend to get caught up in the day to day. And they'll ask me questions such as, why isn't my business further along? How long can I keep going at this pace? And will I ever find the right guidance or help to get me to the next level? So I created this framework. I call it the 7531. And I use this because the challenge that happens with being a small business owner is we're getting stuck at each stage of business. So what happens is in startup, when you're just starting out in business, we fall into the do it all trap. And we have so many things on our plate. And yet we feel like we're being pulled in a lot of different directions. But what really needs to be done during that time in that startup phase, that stage of business, is we need to be focusing on our ideal client and their needs and kind of gearing everything towards them. But a lot of times we get caught up in, we have to be everything to everyone. Then when the business starts progressing, we go into what's called the ramp up stage. And this is the stage where we have consistent sales coming in. And it's like, oh, this is great. But now what happens is we don't have basic processes that, that everything is in our head. We don't have it in a doc. We don't have it in a, a, a form or bullet pointed. And that's really what we need to do because we are doing this, but it's all in our head. We need to get it out of our head and put these basic processes that we have in place. How do you contact a client? How do you work with a client? What's the first step? 
What do you want your email system process to be? Really simple ones that you don't want to overlook. And it's a great way to get you start, started. And this will take some things off your plate. Next, that prepares you for when you get to the buildup stage. And the buildup stage is when you are ready to hire a team member, whether it's virtual or in person, you're ready to do that. And those basic processes that you put into place, now with a team member, you can actually start automating some of those processes and turn them into systems, create systems. Because I can tell you what I know to be true is that when you're working with a team, they want structure. They want to know when they're doing well and when they're not, when they're meeting goals and when they're not. So to have that system in place, everyone is on the same page. And the last stage here is what I call leader up. This is when you're at the point where you want to have leaders and managers in your business. So the goal there now is you're going to be focusing on training and developing those people. Now, not everyone is going to want to get to leader up. Many people will be happy in different stages of business. But what I find is when people want to get out of a stage, they tell me, I wish I did this sooner. So to clarify this a little bit more, this is what I see when people get stuck. If we take what we know as a typical eight hour day, now <laughs> I say that jokingly because as business owners, a lot of times business owners don't have eight hour days. Their days are much longer. But for this example, let's assume that a work day is an eight hour day. There are many business owners in startup that are working more than 56 hours a day. That's seven days a week. Whether you cram it into six or you cram it into five, it's still, set, it's still seven days a week. And what they'll say to me is I'm exhausted or I need a day to recoup and regroup, get my thoughts together, or I need a day to rest or kind of chill out. So they still are working that amount of time and ramp up people get to that 40 hours because they've taken some of the things off of their plate and they were able to create some processes that made them more efficient. Now I can tell, now that's five days a week. And I can tell you that most business owners can get to five days a week on their own. It may take them a while, but they can. But once you start going into build up and leader up, I haven't really met business owners that didn't get there without help. And I am a perfect example of that myself. So build up is when you're working 24 hours in your business. And that is there because you have teams and you have systems and processes in place. If you are able to step out of your business and go to different events, go to trainings, go to present yourself, and show up, you are actually in your business for less time. And you have time then to do other things. That freedom that you wanted to you know, care for others, do volunteer work. Um, it could be your own children. It could be an aging parent. You have that time. Some people will turn around at that point and say, wow, I'm semi-retired at this point. And, and leader up as well. You know, you're in there and you're really, you have a well-oiled machine and your business is functioning. It can function without you there. You can step away from it when you need or you want to. So when we think about this, what happens is when you're looking at a trusted advisor value, what a trusted advisor does is they help you get unstuck sooner. So we had five presentations before this one. And all of them, as Beth was saying, had different topics that they were talking about. And each one of them can help you get to where you want to go sooner. These people have business, industry, or subject, or even area, knowledge, experience, or expertise. And they come in the form of either a coach, a mentor, a consultant, a professional, maybe even a trainer. 
But that's the value of a trusted advisor. And for today's workshop, the last one in this series, there's three things that I want to go over with you. What I call the big three, the advisor role, and action steps that you can take. So when I talk about the big three, I'm talking about the owner's focus, what they should be focusing on. And this is what they're gonna focus on at every stage of business. An owner is always gonna be focusing on messaging. The messaging has to be clear and consistent, right? We want the same messaging out there. We want people to hear that. So you become known for that. Your financials, your financials will guide your decisions. So you have to be aware and you have to understand your financials. Relationships, build and nurture relationships. They are so valuable to you at every stage of business. And having a trusted advisor can actually help keep you focused on these things and help you be accountable. So let's break these down a little bit. What happens is with the big three here, your messaging, that consistency, consistency is in an intro or a bio. It can be on your website. That messaging on your social media or any ads that you would have out there, that messaging is consistent and people will see you and they'll say, oh yeah, that's the person. That's who I want to talk to. That's who I want to connect with. With your financials, even though you may have a bookkeeper, for example, you still have to understand what your reporting means. So your bookkeeper can explain this to you if you don't know. So it's important that you understand and you meet with your bookkeeper on a regular basis if you're not doing this on your own, because this will really affect the growth of your business and the hiring and decisions that you're going to make. You're going to be able to make better decisions. And when it comes to relationships, building and nurturing those relationships, this is done through networking, um, referrals. You may know someone that would be a good fit for someone and you can pass their name on. It might not be a service that you provide, but you may know someone who does. So it's a great way for you to connect people. You can collaborate. I know that many people, and I've started collaborating with others as well, because they offer services, you offer services, and all of a sudden you find that you're a really good fit and you might be able to do something together. And then when you're building relationships and you're nurturing those, you're talking to people, you're having conversations. You're not being salesy. You're just getting to know them and find out. And the funny thing about that is all of a sudden you might say, you know what? I think there's either a new service or product that I might be able to offer to help someone. Or you might need to update an offer that you had. This happened a lot when we were going through COVID. People realize that. Even packaging an offer that you have a little bit differently is always a good thing. So the next part of this is your trusted advisor's role and goal. So when you have a trusted advisor, their role is to guide you. Of course, they're gonna ask questions to find out where you are and what your challenges are, but they're gonna do a lot of listening and they're gonna give options or suggestions for your stage of business, for the industry that you're in, and for what your needs are at that time. A trusted advisor is also good to confirm, to confirm the things that you've done, to confirm that you're on the right track now, what you're doing, or that you will do next. It's also a great way for you to test things, ideas that you have, things that you've been kind of tossing around, but you haven't done yet, or you weren't sure about. It's a great way to do that. And then we all have blind spots and trusted advisors are able to help you realize those blind spots because that's why they're called blind spots. We don't see them ourselves. Their role is to keep you accountable. So you can check in with them. 
they can assess and give you some next steps. Because, you know, as owners, what happens a lot of times is we don't have, other than our customers and our clients, but as far as propelling our business, we don't have anyone to kind of go in and uh, go in and keep us accountable on our own. We don't have anyone. So having this trusted advisor is a great way because we don't have a boss. So we now have someone that we can go to. And now their goal, a trusted advisor, when they're meeting with you or you're working with them, their goal is to give you value and save you years of frustration. As I said before, so many people have said to me in one way or another, I should have started this sooner, or I wish I did this earlier, or I didn't think I was ready, but now I realize I, I was. And, you know, it's, it, we think that way, but you're ready when you're ready. Resources. Here's another thing that a trusted advisor will help you with. I tell people we kind of complicate this, but we only have four resources when we break it down and make it simple. We have money, we have time, we have people, and we have skills. Now, at different stages of business, these are going to change. When you're starting out, you might not have a lot of people, but you can reach out to advisors and consider them people. They're a resource. Maybe you don't have as much money, but you have more time. And as you go through the different stages, these will change. You're always going to be looking at your skills and building your skill sets. And then if it's an area that you're not, it's not your thing, right? It's not your expertise. Those may be skills that you can delegate or outsource. So a trusted advisor will you help you use your resources wisely so that you can build or next level your business. And that really is the goal. So when we come to action steps, things that you can actually do, what happens is we know that knowledge is power, but when we, we really grow by implementing on the right activities at each stage of business, right? The ones that are gonna move our business forward. So I wanna give you an example of this. When we're in, startup and we're doing all of these things, we have a lot on our plate and we're focusing on our clients and we need to get customers and clients in the door and we need to make some sales. And we're, oh, should I be focusing on this? And should I be doing Facebook? And should I be doing this? And should I be, well, it's easy to think that we should do every single thing that's out there and we should spend a lot of time on it. But as the trusted advisors and all these other series will tell you, there is a way to go about it at each stage. And, and when you're in your earlier stages, you may not have the same amount of money to put into it. So there's a lot of organic, there's a lot of free resources out there that you could use. And it's important to focus on those right activities. Don't worry about building a team if you're in ramp up right? You're not going to worry about that right now. You're going to focus on the activities that are going to move you forward in that stage of business. And it's really easy to watch other people and to compare ourselves to them. And I really suggest that you don't do this and you focus on your stage because getting this right will really, really help your business succeed. Now, this is a business scorecard tool, and I thought this was a great tool to show you what I mean by this, to actually put it in visible, right? To put it in action here. Now, these numbers at the top, $10, $100, $1,000, $10,000, what I want to be clear on this is this, this is the dollar amount of the value that these activities are for your business. Now, yours may not be exactly like this. They, they could be off, but I thought these were really good numbers to use because many people have said that they get it with these numbers. This is not what it costs you. This is what the value that'll bring to your business. So let me go through this for you. $10 an hour activities 
are activities that are uh, more simpler activities, easy to do, but they can suck a lot of time out of your day. Filing, organizing, data entry, a lot of things on social media, like getting lost in social media and going down that rabbit hole. Editing things on your website, you may go in and start editing and before you know it, you spent three hours there and you're focusing on, well, maybe I'll change this font or maybe I'll... we can get into a lot of procrastination in that area. So those are the things in your business that you really want to take off your plate early, either delegate, outsource, and take those things off your plate. When we get into the $100 value activities, these things are the outsourcing, the delegate, some operational tasks that are going to be done in the business. So you have a service that you're going to be using and you outsource certain things. Some of the legal work, um, having an appointment with someone or maybe the accounting work in your business, having an appointment with your, an advisor, that is that type of activity that you're doing. This is from your perspective. Reviewing your financials and going over them so that you can make better decisions in your business and you know where you're going. Creating blog content. That would be $100 an hour activity. Now, when you get into the $1,000 activities, these are the things that are going to propel your business, the, the $1,000 and the $10,000 activities. These are activities that are revenue generating activities. These are where you want to spend most of your time on actual sales call, branding guidelines. So you can have those guidelines, your messaging what you want to be everywhere. You don't have to be the one to post it, but you're setting those guidelines, actually interviewing people for your team. Some of the higher level systems and processes that are gonna actually propel your business and prepare uh, those processes and systems for your team. So you're, now you're working on efficiency and you're working on productivity. And then $10, $10,000 activities would be public speaking and training, getting your name out there, creating new product services and offers. Those products and services and offers will generate revenue. Selecting team members. These team members can help you with revenue coming into your business. Creating your positioning or your marketing message, the one that is going to be consistent. So when I share this with people, they're like, wow, they look at it. And a lot of people have commented to me when they look at it laid out this way, they realize how, me, how much time they're spending in the lower level activities in their business, activities that are not going to generate revenue and they're not going to uh, you know, produce sales for your business to next level it. So some of the roadblocks that can happen in your business, right? You're working with a trusted advisor, but yet a lot of times we're fear, we're fearful. And there's a lot of fears that we have. We're thinking about getting a trusted advisor or working with it, working with one. And we, these fears come up and it really holds us back. I'm worried about new skills that I have to develop. It, I don't know what this is going to take in time accountability. You know, I don't know, am I going to, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to be, uh, get these things done? And we have fears about being held accountable. Another fear is about letting go. In the earlier stages of business, many business owners actually believe that they're the only one that can do these things. And we hold on to that belief. No one could do it as good as I right? They, I know they, they can't do it as well as I can, and it won't be as good when it comes out. I'll be able to do it better. And we're, we're, when we grow, we have sometimes setbacks. We find these little holes that'll show up. And as we're going to the next level, we'll say, uh-oh, maybe that didn't work in my business. So we look at it as a setback. That's part of growth. You know, like riding a bike, you, you fall, you get a skinned knee, but you get back on the bike and you go. And before you know it, you're riding and you're doing fine. 
So those setbacks are perfectly normal at every stage of business when you're moving to the next level. So those are some of the roadblocks that can actually happen. And now when we give you some tips and resources when it comes to advisors, you need to be coachable when you're working with an advisor. You really do. And what I say to people is have an open mind, be open-minded, have a mindset of curiosity. They may make a suggestion and at first you might think, well, how am I gonna do that? Um, I don't know if that's gonna work for me. Ask questions. If you don't understand it or you don't think it'll be, work for you, say that and ask questions because they can dive in a little bit deeper. Be willing to test things, be willing to try things out that they say to you and, and, get, and then give them feedback of how well it went. Be okay with making mistakes. We all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. It's not gonna destroy everything. It's okay with making mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. And cut yourself some slack because when you think about it, there's a lot of people out there that would never go into being a business owner themselves. They wouldn't. You are a select group of people that have that grit, that have that drive and are willing to do this. So cut yourself some slack because when you're not as hard on yourself, you'll notice that the rewards will be sweeter and they'll also um, come quicker. You'll notice some more. You'll be able to celebrate your wins. Now, as far as resources, when I think about this and I think about all of the resources that I've had in all the stages of business, you know, some of them are right in front of us and we don't even realize it. I mean, SCORE is a great resource. It's presentations like this, um, in-person events and recorded versions are great. And there's a lot of resources. And the fact that there are free resources are wonderful. There's also resources that are in your chamber and groups that you belong to. Uh, you could be belong to like BNIs. I found a great resource for me to be Toastmasters. I know uh, for many, many people, uh, they'll say that Rotary is a great resource for meeting new people and working together on causes. So there's lots of resources out there, valuable resources. And you'll find over time that resources are a great fit for you. And a lot of times what will happen as well as you may need to move on. You may need a different advisor or a different type of advisor. And a lot of times people, when you're in those groups and you're working with them, they'll be able to uh, connect you with people that will be able to help you. People that will know that stage of business or an area of expertise that you need at that time. So it's important to you know, realize that. So what I want to do is I really want to thank you for being in here, being here today at this um, session. And I wanted to go back to a slide, the, the slide that I was talking about earlier with the um, 10,000, you know, the thousand, the um, hundred dollar and the $10,000 activities. When you think about that, now I have a ton of things that I could put on that slide but I just put a few on there to keep it simple. Nowhere on that slide did it say learning was a $10,000 or $1,000 activity, right? So even this training that I'm doing for you right now, okay, and all of the other trainings that you do, a book that you read, a conference that you go to, we think about it and we say, wow, you know, I traveled or I do, did this or I set that time aside. You know, there's so much value to it. I am going to tell you honestly, if you don't take any action, there is zero value. The knowledge that you gain, you can get a rush, you can get excitement, you can feel like you did something, but it's only when you apply it to an activity and you take some kind of action that really you have value. And that's the gold in that. So um, I, 
when, and, and depending on what it is, it'll be in that high dollar value amount for your business, or you can get stuck in a lower value. So that's something a lot of times that trips people up. And I want to be really clear on that, that it's so important to take action. I know people that have gone through tons of training. They've gone through tons of, um, read tons of books. They've gone to a lot of things, but then they shy away from taking action and doing something on it. And that's where the true value is. So again, um, I thank you for being here tonight. And if you have any questions, um, it's really time for that. I can help you. Uh, and you know, and, and it, what would be really cool too is to find out what types of businesses, what types of industries you're actually in. That would be a cool thing. Well, we, we do have a question for you here, Marianne. Could you elaborate more on the $10,000 activities? Sure. Yeah. In fact, um, what I can do is I can go back. I can go back to that slide because it might be clearer for people if I do that. Um, let me just go back here. So the $10,000 activities are the activities that are going to generate We're income. still, oh, there we go. We're going, there we, go. There we are. We're there. They're gonna generate income for your business. So if I knew what, types of industries people were in, that would be really helpful because I could give you some like real world examples. But if somebody, let's say they were in um, a, okay, so brick and mortar type of business. If you were in a, a brick and mortar business and you were a, um, let's say you had a retail store and, and you were, um, selling, let's say, let's say you were in a brick and mortar retail store and you were selling. So what would happen is creating new products, services, and offers for that, that store, right? To say, okay, what are my best selling products? What are my best selling offers, services that I have? If you're in the server based business, what generates the most income for me? and going in and saying, these products and services don't generate a lot of income for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna focus on these. And maybe when people come in, you're listening to your customers and your clients and you're saying, they're getting stuck in certain areas. Maybe I could actually add another service or I can include something in that offering. I can put like an added thing in there that would solve that problem. So if you're spending time on that, creating that, and then putting it out into the world, that's going to bring in revenue. That is a $10,000 activity because that's going to bring revenue into the business as opposed to data entry where you're sitting in front of the computer and you're spending days and days with data entry. Big, big difference. That's not really bringing revenue into your business. Selecting team members, if you're in that stage of business and you are building your team and you're actually selecting them and you're going through the process of creating an offer, offering them a job, and you're in the process of doing that, that is amazing because when team members come in, now your capacity to do more, sell more, create more product or streamline is going to be better. And that is going to generate more business. We have the capacity of, ourself, of ourselves. We can only do so much work. That's it. We can only do so much. We're going to burn ourselves out. But the, And there's a ceiling that we'll reach. So selecting the team member is a $10,000 activity. But onboarding that team member, putting a system and process in place, and having someone else onboard them is not a $10,000 activity. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, thank you, Marianne. Um, they want, had somebody here saying, is a trusted advisor synonymous with a business coach? Yes, a coach could definitely, a coach is a trusted advisor. Yeah, could be a coach, um, could be a mentor, could be a trusted advisor as well. 
mentors are people that had um, actually have done it. They've gone through the same things that you've gone through. You may have a mentor um, in your industry and what you're actually doing. They, in an area of your business, marketing, sales, and they're walking you through that and they've done it. So yeah, a mentor, a mentor, a coach. Absolutely. That's a trusted advisor. And, you know, it's a good fit. You want a good fit. You want someone who um, has a personality that works well with you, that, uh, you know, gets you and, and you feel very comfortable with them because you're talking about your goals. You're talking about your dreams. And this person is going to help you get there sooner. So don't get discouraged if one trusted advisor doesn't seem to work. I mean, when you think about it in your personal life, you have maybe gone to a, a doctor and that doctor, maybe it, the doctor was a great doctor, but you really didn't feel like you connected and you may change practices. It happens. Doesn't mean that the doctor was bad. It just means that it wasn't a good fit for you. There's also a lot of people that'll sometimes say, this person is an expert you know, when you I use the medical profession right now, but they don't have the greatest bedside manner, but it's okay. I know they're really good. I'll deal with that. So, you know, we can laugh in those situations, but those are people that are trusted advisors as well, because you're looking for their guidance. We have several other questions coming up for you. First is, can you please redefine interviewing? Is that for clients or employees? So interviewing, yeah. So if, if you're interviewing, when you're talking to a client, that interviewing can work well when you're speaking with a client, because now what you're doing is you're um, going in and you're seeing if that client is a good fit. So you're interviewing that client that can bring on revenue. That's a definitely a high value activity is interviewing to see if that client's a good fit and it's gonna work for you. It also could be interviewing a team member that you're bringing on and qualifying them, qualifying a client, qualifying a team member. Because in both situations, we've all, whether it's in our business or when we worked, right? Before we opened our business and we worked somewhere else, we've all been where there have been a, a bad hire. And it doesn't mean that the person is a bad person. It just means that it wasn't a good fit. So what I learned over the years, when I kind of built that muscle, that interviewing skill muscle, and the more I interviewed, I found the better I got at it. And I was actually better to qualify the people that would be a good fit. And as far as clients, it's the same thing. If you're in an industry or a space did you ever have a client that really wasn't a good fit, right? So did we qualify them as well as we could? That could hurt our business if we, if we hire someone that's not a good fit or we take on a client that isn't a good fit. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, this one I'm going to break down for you. So I can understand it's recommended to devote my daily time towards creating my systems and marketing messaging, is that correct? I feel yes. guilty when I am not working with clients and leave all the messaging to late evenings, feeling guilty that those activities are not working since I feel like I am not making money while I'm doing them, unlike when I see a client. Okay, so that's a great example. So when you're seeing a client, that is definitely rev revenue generating activities. And your marketing messaging may be good, it may be really good, and it may be working for you because you're, you're getting those clients in. Because as you're going up the different stages, when you're in ramp up, you have consistent work revenue coming in, you have consistent sales. So your message may be clear. What'll happen though, as time goes on is clients change, right? The way people are working, COVID, we saw that with COVID and you may have to change or uh, change your marketing message up a little bit. People sometimes rebrand, but yes, to your, your marketing message and your positioning in the marketing place 
are you a service or do you have a product that is a lower price point product or service and you're going to sell tons of them, right? You have to sell a lot of them. So your positioning in the marketing play, marketing is um, a lower price product or is your product or service a higher price product and you're not going to be selling as much because of that capacity. So creating and knowing that positioning is great and creating that marketing message is to get those clients in. But if you already have a stream of clients coming in, then that's already been done. Chances are you've already done it. Thank you. Um, got a two for one here. First, <laughs> where does create creating email copywriting for sales funnels, like for a book launch, fall on this chart? And two, do you recommend outsourcing the lower dollar generating activities so you can focus on the big generating activities? Okay, I'm going to answer the second part first. Yes, you definitely want to get to a point where you're outsourcing and delegating. Um, it could be an in-person, you know, uh, that you hire part-time. It could be a virtual assistant. It could be a service. You can outsource it with some services that provide those types of things. You want to delegate and outsource as much as you can of the lower level, the lower value things in your business, those activities, and you want to focus on the higher ones. The first part of that question, can you repeat that for me, Budley? Yeah. Um, where does creating email copywriting for sales funnels, like for a book launch, fall on your chart? Okay. So if you have a book launch, that actual launch, that project, right? Um, is a higher level activity because you wanna sell the book. Um, and a lot of times you'd be surprised that people will tell me it's not so much the money that I made on the sale of the book, but it was the branding and the opportunity to do the public speaking and to get my name out there that was huge. So. Um, the value of that. But what'll happen is when you create that launch, that's definitely a higher level activity because you're going in and you're creating that. But parts of it, like the copy and some of the um, systems and processes that you're putting in place, those are lower level. <coughs> so you can, you can, you can get, you can outsource some of that or have someone help you with those types of things, but the actual uh, funnel that you're going through, the actual messaging that you want to put out there and the copy, right? Someone can write the copy, but you can get out there and say, this is the message that I want to send. So when you break it down, there's certain things that the actual one part of it is a higher level activity, but then we think we have to do the entire thing and we don't. We break it down into pieces and we can actually outsource and delegate some of that. So I'll give you an example that, um, that I do. So when I am talking about um, my strategy for the content that I'm going to put out for an entire year. The strategy itself, where everything connects to products, services, and offers, the strategy, and I say, okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to create this. That's the $10,000 value activities. But when I go in and it's a, okay, I'm going to now write a blog for that or I'm gonna go in and now I have to post on social media or I have to send out emails. Those are the things that I use a service for so that I can schedule those things. And in one hour, I can schedule content out for an entire week or for two weeks. I use a, you know, source, a resource for that. So I'm not spending time and that lower level activity. 
but I'm spending time in the higher level activity. So you can break those down. Thank you. What is the difference between interviewing a client and a sales call? So when you're on a sales call, um, you're, what you're doing is you're actually making the sale. On interviewing, interviewing, if you use that for a client or a, um, a person that you're hiring, you're actually qualifying them. But when you're on the sales call, that's the call that you're actually going to be making a sale. A lot of times what will happen is people will have a, um, a kind of like right fit call or a discovery call, or you'll, they'll, they'll be interested in a project, uh, a product or service that you have, and you're going to kind of see what their challenges are. Um, a lot of times interviewing doesn't actually even have to be done by you. Sometimes what'll happen is um, in some, many cases is you'll get someone else on your team to do an interviewing call and say, yes, this person looks like they're gonna be a really good fit. They're in need of this product. Um, and they're really, you know, so now you get on a sales call with that person. So it's really qualifying. I find a lot of times what people don't do is they don't do the qualifying part. And if you've ever ended up with a client or a hire that wasn't a good fit or really like sucked a lot of energy out of you and didn't really understand, it's really not their fault. They weren't, you didn't qualify them beforehand, if that makes sense. Thank you. Um I'm going to read this as I'm seeing it. I'm not quite following the question. Would you recommend public speaking training graduate students in your academic field, even though you are not speaking to your targeted audiences who are in a different field? Is that a valuable activity? Well, anytime you do public speaking, um, if it's not something that's going to generate revenue, or training, if it's not going to generate revenue for your business, then I probably wouldn't put it in that higher level activity. But what I would do is I would say it's a great way for you to test, test um, your presentation, test how it lands with people, and you know, ask questions, get feedback. It's a great way to see if they have value, that if they it brought them value. Because you may have a niche that you work in, and that's your niche, but then other people will approach you. So I primarily work with automotive shop owners and skilled trade business owners. But after doing that for a while and meeting other people, somebody will say to me, yeah, but you do this, this, and this, and I get it. Could you help me with that? So you may start off with one group, but then it expands because other people will realize what you do and say, well, you know, business is business. What you're saying makes sense. Can you work with me? And that's the situation that you're talking about. So if um, you're doing it as a, lear a learning for yourself, right, it's definitely a valuable thing to do. But I wouldn't put it in the $10,000 value Thank if it's not your target market. Um, someone is asking for your contact information. So if you could go to your thank you slide. Yeah, I'll go to the last slide. That and uh, I'm going to do one my wrap up now because um, we'd like to obviously thank you for some really interesting information and taking the time to speak with us. I'd like to also thank the Monroe Chamber of Commerce, the Monroe Economic Development Commission, and the Monroe Library in planning this webinar with SCORE, which is the sixth in a series of six webinars. As a reminder, a recording of this webinar and the materials will be available within a couple of days on the fairfieldcounty.score.org website. Please check our website for uh, upcoming webinars. And again, SCORE offers free individual counseling 
So please use the link on the screen or our website and click Request a Mentor. We're available by phone, email, and video these days. Also, please fill out your evaluation that you will be sent at the end of this event. And finally, on behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's live webinar. And in closing, Marianne, thank you very much. And everyone else, please enjoy your evening. Thank you, it was a pleasure.